Yum yum. Hey, this is Yazan Malkosh from Pixel Fondue, and today we're going to take a look at creating a hexagon array or hexagon grid. Uh, now, typically, when you're creating something like a square grid, that's pretty simple to do, uh, especially when you're using geometry. Uh, but if you're doing something like a hexagon, it does become a bit more complicated, and I want to make sure that this is covered in a short little video. Uh, now, this can be done in any kind of application that does mesh operations or procedural operations on, a, on its geometry. We're using the Modo uh, mesh ops in this case. Uh, everything is procedurally done. There is nothing that I actually modeled in here. And what this gives you the ability to do is to simply um, control how many X and Y um, hexagons do you want. Now, again, it's not as simple as just putting them next to each other. You can definitely stack them up, but you can't uh, just go right and left without them. So we're going to cover that in this uh, video. Hopefully you'll learn something uh, new. And uh, if uh, you find a better way of doing it, definitely put some comments down there and uh, let's see if we can update this thing. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much the gist of it. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is hop into our setups tab right over here. You'll notice I've got a 3D viewport in perspective mode and I have a schematics window open at the bottom. Now, um, this is not going to be doing something too difficult. You will need some math in there, uh, specifically trigonometry um, and some multiplication. The trig is pretty simple. Um, it's just basic, uh, uh, what is it, Pythagoras uh, theorem. Um, and that's about it. So the first thing we do is we also want to make sure that our deformers are on. If your deformers are not on, your mesh ops are not going to be visible. So make sure that's uh, uh, on. So press O for your viewport options at the bottom here, just enable deformers. Uh, the next step is we're going to create the first hexagon. So we're not going to actually model it. We're not going to use a normal um, basic uh, tool like a cylinder. We're going to do that procedurally. Um, by default, this is a new scene and I have the mesh, empty mesh layer uh, selected. We're going to add an operator and we're going to go for uh, create cylinder. And we're going to set this to Let's set the Z direction so we can see it. Um, and we're going to have this to be, let's get something that's easy to deal with. So 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and then 0. And then we want six sides and just one segment. Now, this will give us the initial hexagon that we're going to use. Um, obviously, this is all you know, uh, reusable later, so we can change the, the radius and things like that. Um, but for now, that's the number I'm going to go with. I'm going to grab these two channels, radius X and Y, and just put them inside, uh, add selected into my schematics window. Once I do that, I'm gonna now be able to use them uh, to link them to a bunch of other nodes uh, that I need for this. Now, the next step is to create a clone for this um, hexagon. Now, obviously I can do it two ways. I can either clone up or clone to the side. If you clone to the side, it doesn't work 100% because they're not gonna align right here. So you won't see the next hexagon doing this, right? Um, it needs to align properly. But for that to happen, that means the hexagon needs to be shifted up a little bit. And that's what we're going to be working on. So the first step is to actually create a clone. And we select the clone uh, operator. In this case, you do want to select the clone and not the array. So make sure you do that. Uh, once you do that, expand until you get to the tool pipe. Click on linear generation and just add the X and Y offsets in here. So uh, let's bring that down to zero, zero just for now. Um, what I want to do is actually clone this so it moves into this position specifically. Now, obviously, I can try to do it by hand, and some things will, you know, obviously some of the numbers will work and some of them won't, um, but I need to figure that out. Now, the uh, radius of the hexagon, which is basically the, the point from the center to uh, the outer uh, longest length, that's the uh, 100 millimeters. Um, unfortunately, what I want to go up, for example, this isn't 100 millimeters. This is actually a little bit less. 100 millimeters would be right here because if we were doing a circle, this would kind of go around uh, in this direction. So to find this, it's a simple uh, trig, uh, trigonometry question because I have a triangle right there. And that triangle has a 30 degree uh, angle and this one is a 60 degree over here and a 30 degree over here and a 9 degree over here. And what that does is that gives me the ability to now use uh, sine and cosine to find the value of the length uh, of this, um, of this uh, part or this side of the triangle. And in this case, this is the 60 degree. And I can find the sine of the 60 degree, which is the opposite on top of the uh, diagonal of the longest um, side. So we can just do that. Let's go here and just press uh, sine. Get that in here. 
great. And just input the value of 60 degrees because I know that it's 60 degrees for me. And uh, I don't want to put it in there currently because if I just do that, um, it's going to go way off because this is a relative uh, number. So it's a 0.866. Uh, and that isn't indicative of the actual distance. What I need to do is multiply this number times the radius itself. And that way, that triangle uh, it makes sense. It's no longer relative. It's an absolute value. So to do that, uh, let's add a multiply. Get that in here. Great, great, great. Look at that. It just snaps into place. Now, um, I kind of got lucky with the offset. Uh, the reason why is because in this case, what I need to move uh, this to is this distance again and again. And for that to work, obviously from this point, it's this, this, and this. So it's three times the sine of 30 degrees, which is the smaller side of that same triangle we did a second ago. Now in this case, uh, if you guys know your trigs, um, the sine of 30 is 0.5. So 0.5 for the sine of 30. Now for this to work, um, as I've mentioned is, I need it to be shifted around. So if I shift this here, it needs to be shifted uh, one and a half amount uh, approximately to here. And what the sign kind of confirms is that, yeah, it's 0.5 of the radius plus um, uh, the radius itself as well. Uh, so this in this case is 0.1. And I know this because this is an equilateral um, triangle um, because math. Uh, 360 divided by 6 is 60, 60, 60, 60. So that means they're all at the same. And I know that this is 100 millimeters, 100 millimeters, 100 millimeters. But let's pretend we don't even know that. Um, in this case, what I need to do is start adding, adding and multiplying to get to that value. So I know that this is, again, the relative amount, 0.5. Um, I need to multiply that by the radius. So let's multiply that here. Multiply. And we're going to add the, or we're going to add this node here. Um, multiply. Oops don't do that. Multiply this. So the value here should be half. Great. That worked. Um, but obviously I can't do just the half. I need to add the, the, so the half would just give me this offset, but not give me this entire offset. Um, so we're going to do another one. Add math. You guys are loving math, aren't you? Um, add these two together and that should give me 0.15 of a meter, which is 150 millimeters. And just for the sake of the argument, I'm going to move this out of here because I obviously in this case, I, you know, I actually uh, guessed where it would be. And I'm going to stick this right there. Bam. So now 100%, I know this is going to change. Uh, this is going to be snapping to it. Now, why is this important? Well, it's important because at this point, I can actually go and I can go ahead and, and I'm going to wire the X radius X to the radius Y. That way I only have one place to change it. And what I'm going to do is... Um, just change the value of the radius and you can see how it just works because everything is being mathematically uh, created, which is awesome. And that's the power of, of uh, learning math uh, at some point. I never thought I'd be using this, but apparently I use it more than I am willing to admit. Um, and that's the first step in the hexagon pattern creation. And now the next step in, our, in my uh, little tool here is to be able to array the actual uh, hexagons, both to the X direction and the Y direction. And for me to do that, I'm going to select the mesh again. And let's rename the mesh and save the file and all that jazz. Hexagon. And let's save it as well. Hexagon. Do you want to overwrite? Heck yeah, I want to overwrite. And that's uh, that's the first step right here. Um, what I'm going to add is the add the operation array. Ooh, array. And similar to the clone tool, except for this one works in, uh, in uh, multiple directions. And uh, what I want to do is I don't need this to be, let's just drop this here again so you guys can see what's happening. So obviously I don't need it to be doing uh, this in Z. I just need it to be doing this in X and Y. And again, I need it to a specific value that looks approximately something like this. And uh, hopefully when we figure it out, it'll snap exactly to the location that we want. Um, now, obviously you'll notice if I select any of this and try to double click, nothing is uh, connected and we'll solve for that uh, later on. But 
for now, I think this is just fine. Um, let's go back to my array, grab the array generation uh, or generator tool. And what we're going to do is there's a couple things we're going to add in here. We're going to add the uh, X and Y count, and then we're going to add the X and Y offset and just click here. Bam. And obviously Z, I don't care about. Don't like you Z. Don't want to use you. Um, okay. So let's talk about offset. So the first one is uh, I need to offset. Uh, let's do the simple one. Let's do Y. Uh, and Y is simply, uh, again, the value that we had already done um, for uh, kind of the offset up here, which is this guy. So let's see what happens if I do that again. Y offset again. <gasps> Look at that. Well, what I, have, what I have to do right now is just multiply that times two because it's just going halfway. Again, this is going from here to here. And that's the first uh, value I was able to extract out of the sine of 60 degrees, I believe. And now I need to go the same value twice. And what I'm going to do is multiply. You'll find a lot of multiplication um, nodes right there. So I believe it's grab this guy, stick the number two in there and just snap them. Bam. Look at that. Beautiful. See, step by step. Um, it's a little bit intimidating at first, but once you get it, you get it. Now the next one's gonna be a little bit more uh, tricky in that from this, from this point onward, I need to go from this length to this length. And we know that this length is twice the radius and we know this length is twice the sine of 30. Am I right? Yes, I'm right, I think. Multiply again. Here's that node. We'll grab, first of all, the radius. St Ooh, come on, stick it in there. Here's two. And that's, so if I put that in here, offset Y, boom, that's not good enough. I need one additional uh, radius in there. And then we'll do an add. Here's my add, stick that in here. And we'll stick one additional radius and stick that into X and look at that. So from just figuring out a few math nodes and some two sign, no two sign nodes, um, I was able to create my first working array of hexagons. Now, again, what's nice about this is I can come over here and press C to get my um, channel hall and say, hey, I want um, four of them. And I want eight of them up. And that will give me like a nice little array here. And what's cool is I can always go back to my radius. And from this point, channel hall again. And what you'll notice is that this isn't working. Well, it's pretty simple. Um, I don't have my Y radius tied to this. And they should be the same. So I'm going to grab the X uh, radius and just stick it on the Y radius. And now they're be, being driven by the same uh, channel. And now I get my lovely working hexagon grid. And that looks phenomenal. Now we'll work at, uh, we'll look at a way to kind of create tool, uh, tool handles to get this to be easy to adjust um, in the next step. So let's add some simple channel, uh, tool channel handles um, to my scene. And that way I can kind of control this much, much quicker than having to dig into all this stuff. So what I'm going to do here is add item, other, channel handle, and we're going to change display to arrow. And we're going to change this to local X. That's already on handle X. And we're going to move this down slightly to see it right there. Wonderful. We're going to actually grab this guy and duplicate them. So right click and duplicate. There we go. And this time we're going to go local Y and this is going to be Y. So make sure that changes. Take that to the left, just up a little bit. That way it kind of looks like it's nice. It's a nice arrow, kind of like a Bob Ross of rigging. It's a nice arrow. Put some nice, lovely arrows in there, some happy arrows. 
So we're going to grab these two <laughs> for now. Um, and we're going to start assigning these uh, values to them. So the counter Y, counter uh, X. So in this case, we're going to go to counter X, uh, right click all the way at the bottom, assign handle. We're going to check handle uh, one and assign. Wonderful. Go to channel Y, assign handle, two, boom. And uh, now if you click and drag, you get it, except for you have to click and drag for a very long amount before this actually works. So how can we fix this? Uh, it's pretty easy. We'll just change the sensitivity on this thing. So again, if I grab, um, and you can't click on it, you have to actually click on either the base or uh, right mouse click to select it. That way you're able to do it. Um, just change the sensitivity. We're gonna go for a thousand right here, and a thousand Ooh, right there. So now if I click and drag, there you go. Now there's a lot of things you can do with this. Um, and we'll do some follow-up videos on what you can do with these hexagons. But for now, I think this kind of covered the topic that we wanted to cover. Creating a hexagon, uh, an operational hexagon grid um, out of the procedural operations and mesh ops found inside of your tool. Whether that's Modo, Houdini, or otherwise, um, it should be pretty similar and the math so it really shouldn't change. Um, it's cool. I can go back. And I can, ooh, didn't want to do all that. Uh, press channel handle, do, 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 do. And I can also change the amount. Pretty cool. Pretty cool if you ask me. Those are some happy arrows and happy hexagons living in harmony. No need to uh, live in any other way. All right. That's it for me. Have a good one, guys, and see you in the next video. Yum, yum.